Okay, I have uh, just test mounted the engine onto the engine mount and I've noticed a couple of things. There's no uh, nuts on the four screws yet. It's just sort of sitting there, so I'm going to hold it a little bit, make sure it doesn't fall off. And I noticed a couple of things. First off, um, I put the throttle push rod there. Hopefully you can see it right there. And it touches here and here. And you can also see where the arm is. And the arm is going to have to swing like that. So the push rod has, either has to go up or down. And those really, those this whole engine mount, vibration engine mount system is in the way. So I think I'm going to use the alternate engine mount. And uh, the other thing I've noticed is, um, first off, two things the the um, muffler is going to be a tight fit so I may have to trim this a little bit trim this a little bit right here to get the uh, muffler to fit I'll check that in a minute but the other problem is this was built for the needle valve back here the old style OS engine the needle valve up front here uh, I'm gonna have to cut this out a little bit so I can get to the needle valve and and adjust it so um, that's going to require a bit of Dremel tool work to cut this out, and uh, uh, so I'll be back in a minute, and I'll show you what uh, what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm back, and I've temporarily mounted the uh, engine. Uh, you can probably see it there uh, with the strap across there, and what that does is it allows me to um, use the uh, I put the push rod in, it, uh, uh, the push rod fits quite nicely over the screws and uh, won't have to do anything to the push rod to um, mount it to the um, throttle arm. Um, the other thing I found is if I have the engine mounted a little further forward, uh, almost but not touching the uh, front screw, then the muffler will fit quite nicely like that without touching the side of the fuselage. So the muffler fits well. Now the only thing left to do is to, uh, I've marked where I'm going to have to cut this out uh, to have access to the um, um, uh, to the high speed needle valve. Okay. So, um, with that said, the only thing I'm going to have to do is cut uh, this out with a Dremel tool, um, and I'm going to do that next. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I got my Dremel tool. You may have seen this Dremel tool before if you watched my uh, series of videos on building the SIG Cadet LT40. I used it a couple of times. Uh, it's a great because it uh, uh, is both a drill press and I've got an extension cord for fine um, uh, dremeling. <laughs> um, so uh, this bit is just a wood uh, side cutting bit and uh, what I'm going to do is you can see the mark right there and uh, so I'm going to cut that out and uh, uh, with the Dremel tool, let me see how it works. It's going to be noisy. Probably a medium setting, and uh, I've got this wrap so keep the sawdust off. Okay, so you see how I'm going to do th do that? It's going to be real noisy. I've got my safety glasses on, the reader safety glasses, so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And uh, I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to actually turn the camera off and move it away so the camera doesn't get dust on it too. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back and uh, I used my little um, portable battery powered vacuum cleaner to vacuum up all, vacuum up all the sawdust. And uh, I put the engine back in its bag. So now we'll just sort of set this on there and see how it looks. Okay. So it'll go right about there, and looks good. Uh, remember when you do this hole, let me uh, see if I can get a better shot of it here. 
when you when you do this hole make sure that this angles back because you want to match the angle that the that the needle valve is in um, to that angle okay so that looks good I'm gonna put this back in the bag uh, put the engine back in the bag but the next thing I want to do um, I don't like bare uh, wood out here so I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and thin it just slightly with some um, uh, alcohol. Uh, I may not thin it. I'm, I'm just because I'm, it's going to be so little, it probably won't matter. So I may not thin it. But um, uh, I want to paint this. Get out a paintbrush and paint all of this and let it dry, uh, so that the the exposed wood is fuel proofed. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. Uh, got my epoxy. It's the uh, six minute Great Plains variety. Got my wooden sticks, got a little disposable paintbrush, got uh, some alcohol in a spray bottle, and some and some uh, paper towels. So uh, I'll protect one paper towel here with the engine, engine mount and stuff. So in case I get real sloppy, <laughs> which I have on occasion. <laughs> okay, so blue bottle. Red bottle, red cap, blue bottle, blue cap, and we're going to pour out some epoxy here. When you're dealing with a small amount of epoxy, sometimes it's you're going to do it fairly quick, and uh, you don't really need to thin it. Okay, I probably put way too much that time, but that's okay. Blue cap on, red cap, red cap on red bottle, blue cap on blue bottle, wooden stick to stir, and you just stirring up a nice small amount here. Okay, so there's a nice small amount, and obviously equal amounts of hardener and epoxy. Okay, I'm going to throw my wooden stick away, get out my paintbrush, and dab it in there, and just sort of paint all around it. I'm also going to paint over the, um, um, covering, so that'll sort of seal the covering on too. Good amount, and then I'm going to do brush strokes to even it and get it nice and smooth. And we're going to let that dry for probably at least 20 minutes. One more spot right there. Okay, that looks good. Um, just gonna let that dry, and um, um, I might use actually. I mean, I'm gonna take a bit of alcohol here, and uh, before it drips down too far, I'm gonna wipe a couple of drips right here. Okay, and on the inside, make sure it's not dripping. That looks good. Alright, so uh, I think that's good. We're going to let it sit. I'll be back in a little while. 